hello. I am obsessed with roses. I'm obsessed. I keep planting them in my garden. This year I bought a bunch of David Austin roses, which is an obsession all on its own. And I bought some Strawberry Hill variety and they're climbers. And so I put them in a pot and I planned on making an obelisk for it. Obelisk? Obelisk. I think that's the right way to say it. So they have been growing in really good. They came as bare root, which means they were just like twigs essentially and now they're coming in they're about to bloom so I thought this is our chance to build the obelisk so when I first planted my roses I had these round pots I was very happy with them but my husband was like you can't put something square in a round hole like square peg round hole it doesn't work so we bought different plants that are square and he's very happy with that and he's doing the building so I just listened to him and I figure I'll have two pots left over for more roses to you know extend my obsession <laughs> Anyway, we repotted the roses, that all went great, and then we started making our actual obelisk. So for that we are using four foot long pieces of um, wood that are meant to go outside, and it's nice because I want mine four feet tall so you don't have to cut them at all. All you gotta do is you take two of them and you screw them together at the top. So for the bottom, ours goes out 16 and a half inches and then the top it goes to a point. We're gonna lay those on the ground now that they're built and we're gonna mark every 12 inches. So that's where the rung is gonna go that we're gonna put on a thinner wood and the rung is how the rose is going to climb and it'll support it. Then we're gonna go cut our thinner board. So I am using lath boards because we took a lot of lath out when we switched from lath and plaster to um, drywall, but I will also link other wood that will work just as great. That's the exact same thing that you can just buy from the hardware store, but I like to recycle wherever I can and save a little bit of money. So you're gonna cut your boards. Um, I have dimensions for you of how you're going to cut them. So we're gonna start with six inch boards and that's, we're gonna do two of those for the front and the back. Then for the sides, um, you need it to be just a little bit longer to cover the sides of the ones you just cut. So those are gonna be six and a half inch. Then we're gonna move down and we're gonna do nine and a half inch boards for the front and back and 10 inch boards for the sides. For the very bottom rung, we're gonna do 13 inch boards for the front and the back and 13 and a half inch boards for the sides. And I can put this all in the description so that you don't have to memorize it because that's a little bit tricky. Then all you have to do is you screw your lath boards on to your frame. So just start by putting the frame on the ground um, and you can start from bottom or top, it doesn't matter. And just we pre-drill a hole and then screw in the lath boards. So that will make, you know, you pretty much have two A-shapes. And then put those in the pot and you can lean them against each other and then you add the longer pieces on the sides and that's how you start to connect it. So instead of two pieces, it becomes one. And it's really exciting because honestly, this is not a tricky project. The hardest part for me was figuring out the angle and the sizes, but if you do it exactly like this, you don't have to figure that out. Okay, so one thing you might notice that kind of seems like a problem is that at the top of your obelisk where we screwed it together, it's not quite flat. So you can just take a sander and sand it until it's nice and flat. You don't have to figure out any like crazy angles, you just sand it. Keeps it simple. What was really important to me is that we have a finial at the top. I just like that little bit of decoration. So I bought a post cap and the finial goes on top of it. Well, if you take the finial off, there's some spots that'll be covered by it and that's where we're gonna screw the post cap onto the top of the obelisk. So you screw that on and then you can screw your finial into place and that makes the frame of the obelisk. Not too tricky at all. This is one day project for us with buying supplies. At the end of day one, I was really happy with the obelisk because they look amazing. So for day two, I painted and honestly, I think you could paint and build in one day. This is a pretty simple project. So I'm using the color Frosted Sage to paint the wood on the obelisk. And I just like this color because I think it'll kind of pop against the white buildings I have um, outside. And then the pink roses with the blue, I think that's gonna be really nice. Um, painting was pretty simple. The only tricky part was like the inside of the top was kind of annoying to get to. And there's a lot of sides you have to get to everything. So it just took a few hours. So once that was done, I was really excited because they looked amazing and then I wanted always my vision was to have these on either side of my she shed outside um, so we actually ended up I ordered some trim it's called running trim and I'll link it in the description and I just think it's so beautiful and I like to add it to the outside of my building because it takes like 15 minutes to install but it adds like that gingerbread look and I live in an old
old house. It's built in 1905. So I just think all these little details that really speak to the character of the home. So I put that on the outside of the she shed before putting the obelisk out there. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I'm really happy with how it came together. I'm really happy that this was a simple project. We really didn't do any angled cuts because of how we screwed um, the top frame together and then just sanded it flat. That made it very simple. And I mean, you could use a handsaw to make this. That's how easy it is to, you know, cut everything. You don't need a lot of tools. So it's a simple look. Mine is four feet tall is the finished height plus the height of the planter. And you could build it without the planter and just put it in your garden if you want something shorter. And it'll work really nice for, of course, climbing rose is what I'm doing. Clematis would be good for, or morning glory. And it could work for vegetables too, like squash or tomato or sweet peas, or just normal peas, I guess. Anyway, lots of options of how to add this. And the great thing about it is it takes, um, it uses a lot of vertical space. So usually a garden, you can only grow as high as the plants will grow, but this takes it up and it really elevates the look because it draws your eye up towards the sky. So those are all the reasons I love it. I hope you like this project. Um, I would love to know what you think in the comments. And if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up.